in the biblical text, in the Sumerian tablets, in the Torah, you see these UFOs that land and take off. They all have thunderous noises. The wind is blowing. Sand is being kicked up. The elephants are roaring and running away. The animals are running away. We look into the uh, Indian text where we discover Vamanas. And we discover that these Vamanas were these flying machines that they had. They were almost, they called them, the, the, the people on the ground called them flying cities. That's how big some of these things were. When you look at the manuals that were actually left behind and the instructions on how they flew and worked and even flight plans that are sitting inside of actual museums. This should be on mainstream news right now. And not what the junk that they're, you know, whatever they're talking about, you know, all this other crazy stuff. This should be on the news, right? And so these machines, these Vamanas, they actually use something called a ferrofluid vortex engine. That's the modern terminology that I understand it to be based on the description of what it was, right? So when you look at these devices and these flying machines, they had a rotating vortex of mercury. And we know now by modern science, if you take mercury and put it into a torus and ramp up the RPMs by putting a magnet on the outside of the torus, you can get it to move because mercury is a ferrofluid. It's a liquid metal. Once you get the RPM up to 60,000 RPM and you pressurize the torus to 250,000 atmospheres and then you electrify it, you're going to get anti-gravity. And all you need then is maneuvering thrusters to move. See? So they had a ferrofluid vortex engine and maneuvering thrusters similar to what we have right now in the military, which is a uh, top secret pro uh, project, which now is obviously being released to the public as what it is. It's, they're called TR-3Bs. The TR-3B is a flying triangle with a rotating ring of ferrofluid at the bottom, most likely mercury, that uses the same principles to give it an anti-gravity field so that it can maneuver and fly completely silent in the sky. But it has maneuvering thrusters. Now, they travel the vast distances of space. I believe they may have developed a, a, or, a, or found a way to develop warp fields where you can warp space in front of the ship and expand it from the back, allowing the ship to move forward at a very rapid pace without violating Einstein's theory of relativity. We know that warp fields do something very different. They actually... It's like the, the ship is sitting on a tablecloth and you're pulling the tablecloth. The ship actually never is being moved. It's the tablecloth that's moving. Or in this case, case it's space that's moving. And by that method, you can cover vast distances of space without having time dilation. Pretty interesting stuff.